So I grew up a long way from the ocean, and uh, you know, it was, I, it was a National Geographic article that I read when I was I was 20, and uh, there was one or two pictures inside there that made me think, "Wow, that's unbelievable! What's out?" I had no idea that that stuff was out there in the ocean, and that the oceans were unexplored. So what I'm going to hope, what I hope I'm going to do today, is show you the same kind of things. I hope I show you something up here in the next 20 minutes that you say the same thing. Wow, that's awesome, and want to know more about it. Everyone knows what that is, right? Because some people don't. That's our planet Earth from space. And I'll tell you what, you know, it took a lot of work to get that image, a lot of technology to get that image. And we take it for granted. We just say, oh, yeah, that's the Earth. But how cool is that, that we can go out into space, turn around, and look back at Earth? Actually, my neighbor, uh, I live in Cape Cod, south of Boston, uh, was the uh, commander of the space station for uh, a couple of months. And it was amazing because I could walk across the street and just uh, watch her on television, talk directly to her, Sunita Williams, while she was circling this planet, and I got fascinated with the whole idea that you could go to space and do this. But this is not so much about space as it is about, <laughs> about the ocean, because when you work on the ocean, you see the world like that. So that's the Earth. That's the same Earth. No magic. We just spun it around a little bit, looked at the Pacific Ocean, took the clouds away, and look at how much blue that is. That's all water right there. There's a tiny little bit of continent way up here in the upper right and way down here. There's Australia, New Zealand, and California. The Hawaiian Islands are right there, but most of the planet's covered with ocean. 70% is ocean, and the average depth's about two miles. It's a lot of water out there, and most of it's unexplored. In fact, today, when I started in this business, we explored about 5% of the ocean. That was 30 years ago. Today, we've explored about 7%, 7%. That means 93% of most of that planet is totally unexplored. We don't know what's out there. And that's how most people think of the ocean. You know, probably you've been to the beach. That's the ocean. Uh, and it's not. It's very different. You know, we all love the beach. But over the horizon, and you go down out a thousand miles and down a couple miles, totally different world and stuff out there that you would never, ever expect. And in the past, you know, what we used to do is we said that's the world of monsters out there. Uh, for sailing ships, and I love this picture. I love these old pictures of sea monsters, especially uh, this one on the upper left. See that thing with the big fangs? But, but that was what we used to do, and still today, we make monsters. There's a happy, smiley shark, uh, great white, smiling at all of you. And, uh, you know, uh, we make monsters out of sharks, and it turns out sharks are not such bad animals after all. They just got a bad rap. You know, they, they uh, have those big teeth jutting out. They do occasionally eat people. Not their choice of food, but it does happen. Uh, so we make monsters where there are no monsters. There are other things out there, though, that you think might be fantasy, but it's really, really happening. So if you go to the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, you go out here, get in the Potomac River, straight out uh, beyond the shoreline, and right in the middle of the ocean, there's a mountain range. You can see it right there, right, coming down the middle of that slide. That's called the Mid-Ocean Ridge. It's 40, 50, well, let's get this right, 50,000 miles long. Okay, it's the greatest mountain range on Earth. Imagine, look at that thing. So it goes all the way through the North Atlantic and the South Atlantic. And uh, you know, the Alps are a little tiny spot like that. Uh, the Appalachians, a little spot like that. Look at these things, they're incredible mountains. It's the world's highest peaks. It's the world's greatest valleys. There's thousands of valleys many times wider and deeper than the Grand Canyon. There's thousands of peaks higher than the peaks in the Alps. And it's the most rugged topography on Earth. And it's all volcanic, too, on top of that. It's, it's really an awesome feature. And it goes all the way around the world. It's not just in the Atlantic, all the way around the world. So it wraps around the Earth like the seams of a baseball, and it's constantly bubbling with volcanic activity. So if you took all the water off the Earth, that would be one of the most amazing features. But the other thing we see out there, we see mountains, we see valleys, we see mountain peaks, we see underwater rivers, we see underwater waterfalls. In fact, the greatest waterfall on Earth is up here between Iceland and Greenland. It's about five times higher than the greatest waterfall on land. You say, well, how can you have waterfalls in the ocean? It's because water gets it's denser and it's less dense. If you put salt in water or make it colder, it sinks. If you take the salt out, it floats. So we have all sorts of stuff going on inside the ocean, not just mountains. And again, you know, that's just in the few percent that we've explored. Uh, see that water right there? This is like a nighttime view lit up. So there's a body of water sitting right down here in the front. It's got little waves in it. And there's a shoreline in the back. And there's some rocks on the right. Well, that water that you're looking at is under the sea. So from where you're sitting right now, you're looking out the window of a submarine. And you're saying, wait a minute. What's going this, What? You know, there's a lake at the bottom of the sea. So we find lakes at the bottom of the ocean, too. 
So you see that water down there uh, is actually inside the ocean. It's denser than the water above it. And no one predicted it. We just explored. When you're exploring, you don't know what you're going to find. We said, how can this be? Uh, it was too dense. The submarine couldn't even go down into it. There's animals that live in there that don't come up into the ocean because they die. There's animals in the ocean that don't go down into there because they die. Uh, there's animals that live along the shoreline, so lakes under the sea. And you know, what makes it all possible is technology. So engineering is a huge part of this. So the, to go down two miles, three miles, four miles, my friend James Cameron, who makes movies to make money so he can do his ocean exploration, he just made the deepest dive in his own robot that he built. He went down seven miles in a robot by himself. So we're always building new technology. This is some of the technology from where I'm from, Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. All sorts of robots, all sorts of new cameras. Yeah, because it's got to work deep in the ocean where the pressure is intense, where it's pitch black. So we're constantly building new technology. And if you like video games, it's the coolest video game on Earth, is to put a headset on with a joystick and drive a robot around something like Titanic or some, some place that no one's ever been to before. It also involves people, so it's, it's technology, it's people, and it's teamwork. That's what makes this happen. Because when you go out at the ocean, you can have 30-foot waves, you can have 60-foot winds, you, you, you're, you could be fighting for your life, so you have to count on your teammates, not just to help you get the science done, but also sometimes to keep you alive. Now, this is a typical dive, dive in the submarine Elvin. That's our ship, the Atlantis, so it holds about 50 people. And that's the pilot looking out the front window. That window's about that thick, by the way, to, to protect us from the pressure. So there's three people inside a little capsule there. And slowly it comes out on the deck. And it's really hot inside there because it's been out in the tropical sun usually. And it's really uh, inside the sub, you're getting nervous. You wonder, should I go to the bathroom one more time? Because <laughs> you're going to be in there for 12 hours, just the three of you. There's no bathrooms. There's a bottle for men and women both. So there, right, right about here though, everything changes. All that excitement, all that nervousness goes away. You don't hear the ship anymore, you hear that pinging of the sonar, that ping, it goes all the way down to the bottom, bounces back up. The divers check out the front of the sub, they say, okay, you're clear to go. And uh, you add a little bit of water and down you go. And it's about a two and a half hour trip in that submarine to the bottom of the ocean. And you see, it, gets, it slowly gets light blue, dark blue, then pitch black for about two hours. You're in pitch black water. Sunlight's never been there. And we used to think no sunlight, no life until one day we turned on the lights and had a look out the window and the ocean is full of life. This guy is a jellyfish. It's a siphonophore. It's got these working parts. Those are fishing lures. It's got tentacles. It's got little jet thrusters and those are all stomachs. And fully grown is longer than this room is wide. Okay, it can be over 100 feet long. If you touch it and you're diving, it'll fall apart. So what we're learning to do is to find these animals and to study them, we have to get in the water with them instead of trying to catch them in a net and actually study them where they are. They're absolutely cool. They come in every kind of shape and size. They got their own lights, they got their own movement, they got their own motion, awesome animals. So keep going to the bottom and you get to the top of that mountain range and we thought it was just not much going on there but there's that, that water coming out, it looks like smoke, we call them black smokers but it's actually hot water. That would kill us dead like that everyone in this room. So it's full of really poison chemicals coming out of the earth and it's got that really rotten eggy smell, sulfur smell. And so we were sure these places are too deep, it's pitch black, too poisonous, poison that would kill us in a second, too much pressure, the pressure there would crush the Titanic like you could crush an empty paper cup in your hand. We're positive there shouldn't be any life there. So it was one day geologists were down there picking up rocks and they look off in the distance and what do they see? They see something shimmering in the background and they get closer to it and what they find out, they're looking at a column t taller than this room, about twice as tall and everything on there is alive. And they're not just small animals, they're big animals and they're all weird animals. Those white things with the red tips, they're called tube worms but they don't really, we call them worms but they don't have a digestive system. Those are tube worms. There's crabs, there's clams, there's shrimp. And in one spot, there were 300 species of animals and 297 never been seen before. All new kinds of life forms. And all these animals are living on that poison water. Poison to us, it's the food of life for these animals. So, uh, but see the density, how many animals there are? In a place where we said there should be no life at all, the diversity of life, how many different kinds of animals there are? It's more than the tropical rainforest. 
In a place we said no life at all, we find more life than the tropical rainforest. We were absolutely dead wrong about life on this planet. And we're still, every day we go out, in fact, right now, as we're talking, the submarine's on the bottom of the Pacific Ocean studying this place, trying to figure out what these kinds of, what, what these communities mean. Now, uh, also, it's not just the deep ocean. Look, that's a barracuda looking for lunch. And what, one thing barracudas love to eat are octopuses, but octopuses learned to change their skin color and texture Changing the color, changing the texture, and there he goes. And they do it like that, like that. So if you had an octopus up here on the table, it would take one quick look around and go boom, gone. Pretty cool. Titanic. You know, sometimes at the bottom of the ocean we find pieces of human history, and sometimes it comes in a big clump like Titanic. Uh, horrible tragedy when it happened, 1912, April 14th. And we've been studying Titanic. We found Titanic in 1985. There's a little animal living on the bow of Titanic, right where Jack was king of the world, Jack and, and um, Kate. Uh, so we've been studying Titanic a lot because every single year about 14 ships, big ones like this, go to the bottom of the ocean in the middle of no place. And so it's important to be able to go to a shipwreck. They're very dangerous places to work around and, and to find out how, to how do we study a shipwreck. And so Titanic, we've been doing that a lot. I co-led the last expedition to Titanic. It was fantastic. We mapped everything, every single thing around it, everything on it. We're trying to find out how long will it still be around because it's little by little it's starting to rust, rust away on the deep sea floor. And then uh, there we are. Actually, we did send some robots, some cameras on the inside so we could take a look inside as well. I want to show you this, and I do it. It's, it's not something I like to talk about because you see this on the news every day. In fact, when I leave here, I'm going to the CNN studios to talk about this. Uh, this plane's missing, and it's not just the plane that's missing. It's 239 people that were on that plane that are missing, too. And that's Malaysia Air Flight 370. And the mystery has been going on and on and on is that it disappeared somewhere in there, as far as anyone knows. And so the problem we have is not just looking for an airplane and trying to find out what happened to those souls and try to give some relief to those families. Uh, the trick is that we're going into a place that's never been explored before. So every time we go under the water, we send a robot under the water, it's like it's exploring a different world. So it's not like looking in the desert for a, a crash plane around a mountaintop. It's a totally different world. And the media hasn't quite got that yet that uh, you know, it's, it takes a long time because we've never been here before. This is where they're looking uh, right now. They're just wrapping up searching there. But guess what? It takes tech. Everything I told you about early on is what we're using right there. We're using new technology. They're using a, a robot called the Bluefin. They're using a team of people that are out there. They've been out there for weeks working really hard trying to find if the plane is on that spot. It's, it's not easy, but you know, eventually I promise the plane will be found, uh, but it's going to take some time. The last thing I want to show you is that this picture of Earth, and remember how we said it's hard to believe that the octopus could change into that light-colored uh, stuff on the left to the algae on the, uh, on the right to the algae on the left. So there's Earth. There's 7 billion people on there. That's us. You can't see us from space. You, know, you have to have some incredible telescopes just to pick out cities. And so we're like little microbes on this planet, 7 billion people. Uh, but it's hard to believe it, but we've managed, the, seven, the little microbes that we are, we've changed the chemistry and temperature of seawater. You know, if you go to the middle of the ocean, right in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, catch a fish, look at its stomach contents, you'll find little bits of plastic, red, blue, pink, lovely little bits of plastic. You look in his flesh, you'll find flame retardants, herbicides, pesticides, all sorts of drugs, you name it, anything, caffeine, whatever we dump on our city streets, golf courses, backyards. Uh, farmlands ends up in the ocean, so it's getting pretty gross out there. You know, it's almost like when you catch fish now, we're eating our own garbage, so it's got to stop. It's hard to believe it's true, but you know, now, now we know it is true. We've managed to do that. The other thing I want to tell you is that the oceans, when you think of the oceans from now on, it does three things for us. Yeah, that's great to explore. It's exciting, but three things. The air you breathe, every other breath of air you take, fr breath of fresh air you take, that oxygen comes from the ocean. 50% of our air comes from the sea. The food you eat, about two billion people live on, living on this planet, that's roughly a third, depend on the ocean for food. And the water you drink, the water we take for granted, uh, almost all the water on the planet through the water cycle comes out of the ocean. So the air you breathe, the food you eat, the water you drink, those ought to be reasons enough for us to continue exploring this wonderful place called the World Oceans. Thank you very much.